now we're going to be going on to the next session uh, plenary session uh, which is themed new revenue opportunities for discoms and i'm going to take the privilege of introducing our chair first thereafter our moderator and then the eminent speakers we we have with us our chair shri pk pujari uh, he is the chairman of crc he joined the indian administrative service the premier civil services of india in 1981 and was allotted the gujarat cadre during his career he handled assignments in various departments ministries in gujarat as well as the central government such as power commercial taxes finance he was secretary to government of india ministry of power for more than 2 years uh, before his superannuation in 2017 after serving for 36 years he worked in the power sector for more than 7 years as director and secretary and during his tenure the guidelines for cross border trade of power with neighboring countries got finalized a big round of applause for shri pk we now go on to introducing very briefly our moderator for this session shri reji kumar pillai president india smart grid forum ladies and gentlemen uh, he is the president of isgf since its inception in 2011 and is also the chairman of global smart energy federation since november 2016 he is an internationally renowned expert with over three decades of experience in the electricity sector and diverse functions covering the entire value chain and across continents let's welcome him in our next round of applause Let me now go on to introducing our speakers. We have amongst us very eminent speakers, Honorable Justice S S Chauhan, Chairman of D E R C. He joined as Chairperson, Delhi Electricity Regulatory Commission, New Delhi, in 2018. In 2005 itself, he was elevated as Honorable Judge, High Court of Allahabad, Lucknow Bench, an acknowledgement of his commitment, professional excellence, and legal acumen. As Honorable Judge, High Court, he pronounced judgments on many important issues, which were Varied as varied as service consolidation, revenue, criminal recovery, excise, and company matters. A big round of applause for Honorable Justice S S Chauhan. Let me now introduce uh, Shri Prabir Sinha, Managing Director, Tata Power, and uh, Shri Sinha is the CEO and Managing Director of the Tata Power Company Limited (TPC) Mumbai. He has nearly 34 years of experience in generation and distribution sector. Has been responsible for developing and setting up. Greenfield and brownfield power plants in India and abroad. Apart from this, he has actively contributed in bringing about huge socio-economic development and empowerment programs for youth and children in these project sites. And prior to becoming the CEO and MD of Tata Power Company, he has served as the CEO and MD of Tata Power Delhi Distribution Limited. A big round of applause for Shri Prabir Sinha. Next, I'd like to take the privilege of introducing Mr. Tatsuya Izutsu, General Manager, Technology and Product Development, Nissan Electric. and uh, mr izutsu joined the nissan electric company in 1994 he has worked in the field of microgrid systems centered on photovoltaic power generation systems and storage battery systems for 26 years he's the general manager of technology and product development division of nissan electric company a big round of applause welcome mr izutsu and uh, with that let me now take the privilege of introducing and welcoming shri mahesh patankar who provides uh, he's the interim project head regulatory assistance uh, project and he uh, provides analytical and research support to raps india team on wholesale market design innovation and tariff design and integration of electric vehicles and renewables into the grid he also advises the team on strategic engagements with stakeholders in indian states including governments utility regulators think tanks and civil society let's welcome him with a few thoughts of course With that, uh, now I'm going to hand over the proceedings to our moderator, Shri Reji Kumar. One more speaker. All right, there is. We have one more speaker, Shri uh, Gaurav Bhatiani, Director, Energy and Environment, RTI International India. Dr. Gaurav Bhatiani is a senior energy and infrastructure expert with 24 years of experience in leadership, management, technical and advisory positions across South Asia. He specializes in power sector reform and utility transformations. He has an extensive track record of managing large interdisciplinary teams, and he applies his business transformation acumen to lead investment analysis and mergers and acquisitions worth over fifteen billion dollars across the energy and associated infrastructure sectors. A big round of applause for Mr. Gaurav. With that, I will now hand over the proceedings to our moderator. Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to all our participants from across the globe. It, our two-day program, uh, distribution utility meet conducted on this digital platform, is coming to an end. This is the plenary session, and I have the.
pressure of presenting some revolutionary ideas <clears throat> in this session. This is not just from the perspective of the pandemic, but from the perspective of uh, the way the, the energy transition is happening uh, around the world. We have seen last month uh, or last week, we got the lowest price for solar at two rupees per kilowatt hour. We have also seen two months ago in Portugal and in other countries, it has come to almost one rupee uh, per kilowatt hour. In India also, very soon, maybe in, in another next two to three years, we expect the prices to be somewhere there because solar panels are becoming cheaper. The efficiency of the cells are going up and there is no uh, fear of having more and more uh, renewables onto the grid for system operators. Earlier, everybody was when 2009, I still remember when California uh, announced that by 2020, we will have 20% renewables and the grid operators around the world were jumping saying that this is something which will never happen. It cannot be done. So, but things have changed. There are many reports which and many geographies, people are talking about 100% renewables. And if this journey goes, and also in, during the pandemic only last two months, three months before that, uh, Tesla announced that there are going to be electric vehicles with 1 million mile guarantee for the battery. Soon after that, CATL and Volkswagen announced that we will come out with vehicles with batteries which will guarantee 2 million kilometers. And those batteries are going to outlive the life of the vehicle by several years so if the batteries are going to be that cheap and large and uh, high performance uh, the vehicle to grid is going to be something very very common everywhere and many utilities i mean many customers will be able to live with their solar panels and their uh, electric vehicle or other battery behind the meter at, at their premises so this transition is going to be faster, although many skeptics talks about that they are, this will not happen in five years or 10 years or something. So this, in our view, with our close uh, following the technology changes, which is happening, we feel this is going to be very, very uh, uh, soon in most geographies. So when you cannot sell your, what will discoms do when you cannot make revenue from selling the electron from your kilowatt hour, many customers who are your bulk customers today paying the highest revenue slab they are all going to generate out their own then where is the revenue going to come at the same time anytime soon i don't think that the world can live without electric utilities so in a in a world where electric utilities are required at the same time their revenue is not going to be from the sale of uh, electrons what are what is it possible we've been having uh, several uh, round of discussions and this is some of the things which we came out with uh, new revenue opportunities there are two parts to this presentation one we talk about new revenue opportunities enabled by digitalization of the power sector the, while the physical assets like power plant transmission distribution network equipment office building computer communication hardware all depreciate your digital assets appreciate customer data the billing system all digital platform their value goes up with more and more uh, data coming in more and more participant coming into the digital platform the value goes up so each one of them i will explain how we would be able to uh, or a utility a digital utility able to generate additional revenue from these uh, digital assets similarly existing infrastructure like your substations your buildings your uh, customers uh, what other services your, your manpower what is the new revenue opportunities by unlocking the existing infrastructure and services like selling rooftop pv selling uh, energy efficient appliances promotion of electric cooking selling electric vehicle chargers, selling batteries to certain section of the customers and maintaining it, sharing of the communication band bandwidth, uh, the grid interactive buildings and appliances, maintenance services to large customers and unlocking the value of the substation land uh, and also the lamp poles, the millions of lamp poles which they own 
can be a very great uh, asset. And lastly, but most importantly, the cooling as a service. Today we give uh, electricity, water, gas, everything as a service to buildings. We can give cooling also, chilled water over which cold air can be given for air conditioning. So these are the uh, some of the very unconventional services where you will find electricity utilities in three to 10 years from now. So let me first come to the customer data, digital data. It can be shared easily. It removes special and interdomain barriers, co cross pollination over several sectors. And it can be shared with other service providers in other domains like water, city gas distribution, municipal agencies, renewable energy development agencies. None of them who come to a new city knows who are the customers, who they are potential customers. But the electricity distribution company already have all the details about them, their consumption pattern, their income levels, their uh, premises, how big is the house, how, how small is their business unit. All that data is already available with the electricity distribution companies. And that can be shared for uh, uh, with appropriate uh, agreements between these different uh, domain owners. The large aggregation allows better and more integration of renewables into the grid. And big data analytics can be applied over uh, such data. The environment, lifestyle, wealth, health, all this can be brought together and in real time, non real time remote equipment systems. So, use of artificial intelligence and machine to machine communication to determine optimal energy usage, lifestyle, comfort, energy efficiency, etc., in the coming days. The billing and collection system is a very uh, powerful tool which our utilities have. We have published a white paper some five years ago which talked about uh, taking this, uh, the digital assets of electricity distribution companies as anchor infrastructure for building smarter cities. And uh, it was um, uh, Mr. Praveer Sinha who is on the panel who used to be the C managing director of uh, TPDDL in Delhi that time. They signed an agreement with the uh, MOU with uh, the IGL, the city gas distribution company in Delhi. And they have re recently started doing a couple of colonies common billing. So this can be extended to water distribution companies that collecting the uh, collecting the, the, the tax, commercial tax of the municipal agencies and several other uh, revenue streams can come from sharing this uh, or leveraging this platform to other uh, domains. So the AMA data, the energy consumption profile, it's a gold mine of uh, information which can again be shared with other uh, utilities or other uh, system integrators and uh, survey agencies. And this could be another potential uh, revenue stream. The GIS map, the, all the electrical assets meaning all the distribution lines, substations, road, buildings are all captured on a digital map. This is a very valuable asset with the distribution companies today have over 1900 towns in India across. Some of them may not be uh, on a daily basis or on a monthly basis updated, but still it is a valuable asset for somebody coming to uh, lay new uh, uh, communication cable or new water pipelines or city gas distribution pipeline for them to have this information on a digital platform is very valuable. This can be shared across other uh, service providers in, in a city and can also contribute to revenue. The automation systems, the last mile uh, connectivity uh, and also many of the field equipment which you use for SCADA, DMS, distribution automation, uh, demand response, etc., can be shared with uh, other I have seen SCADA, common SCADA for water and electricity in many places. The field equipment and the communication, uh, uh, the bandwidth is common. But in the control room, there are separate uh, uh, servers for water SCADA as well as uh, electricity SCADA. Same in the case of gas distribution. So the la latest trend, which I'll talk about it, is ha having uh, utilities having their own uh, communication system. So this is another area of collaboration and revenue stream. Uh, outage management system, which is again a very powerful platform, which and the mobile workforce management system, which can be shared with a variety of operators in a city, and it can be common platform. 
the customer call center today in india most part of india we have four digit uh, number for a call center state of the art call centers are operated by electricity distribution companies and that can be extended to city gas the municipal services to water distribution all kind of services in a city it can be effectively the the command and control center for a city and where chatbots and voice bots it, it can be leveraged so this again brings additional revenue of streams for the utilities the, now i come to the physical infrastructure where what can they do i'll take another five to seven minutes to finish this some of the side things are very uh, 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 new so selling back to the uh, uh, rooftop pv systems as i said anyway customers are going to how uh, rooftop pv and today uh, the payback time in most part of india say, is three to four years and with the prices further coming down today it's a kilowatt system is around 40 to 45000 rupees we expect this number to be around 25000 rupees by 2025 and uh, the payback time will be much less and people will go for rooftop uh, uh, in a big way and when that going to happen it is better that utilities themselves sell this rooftop systems they, they can empanel some of the quality panels and test and certify installers and they can also take the epc of uh, installing it and also maintaining rooftop systems this is being done by some utilities in some geographies last year the bscs rajadani and the cew did a study in Ra in dwaraga in delhi and they came out with a very uh, interesting number that 22 paise per kilowatt hour of rooftop pv generated as a, a, a income or a benefit for the electric utility so it has time has come for us to have unleash a, a, a rooftop pv revolution in the country before letting customers defect from the grid coming to energy efficient appliances which many of the utilities in india are already doing it but the range of appliances today i find are limited to air conditioners and refrigerators it could go to geysers washing machines and cooktops electric cooking which we will come to next so energy efficiency program it can these things can be clubbed with other energy efficiency programs which the government is running and it can with smart plugs or, or, or uh, smarter appliances which can be remotely controlled which is going to be available in the market very soon this can be another uh, interesting uh, revenue model for uh, utilities we are, we actively advocate now for promotion of electric cooking so earlier very few items used to be there people used to complain that uh, it is difficult to make indian uh, curries and rotis and all that on hot plates but today there are very modern uh, cooking appliances are available uh, ovens hot plate uh, kettle induction cooktops air fryer almost every item in all the cuisine can be made uh, with little bit of practice with electric cooking and we spend billions of dollars taking the the electricity line to almost 99 percentage plus households but do they all get electricity every day? No, that is exactly what currently the main challenge and the government is trying to do that. And we are advocating that when we are doing it from the 200 watt or 300 watt connection we have given to the rural electrification, let us take the capacity to three kilowatt to five kilowatt so that they, their cooling challenge and their cooking uh, challenge can both be managed with the electricity, which is the cleanest fuel at the user end millions of children and women today suffer from respiratory diseases four million people in the world die every year from uh, uh, in-home air pollution and this is something which we need to do, look at it 229 towns in india or districts in india government of india has given license for uh, city gas distribution Twenty-five thousand rupees is that per customer is the connection cost of laying new uh, gas connections so maybe in some of the areas where the work has happened we can still go about uh, continue with that but entire rural india semi-urban india electric cooking is the way forward uh, under the ujala scheme we have given about 150 million households have lpg connection many of them 
don't even refill it because it's, they don't get it on time or they don't have money. But the sheer number when you look at it last financial year, 1500 million LPG cylinders were handled by the agencies in India. Look at the amount of fuel and we spent in handling 1500 million LPG cylinders, transporting it from fueling, fueling stations to households, taking those cylinders back to uh, fueling stations. This is not a economically a, 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 a prudent business which we can sustain for long. And add to that, we spend billions of dollars in importing LPG uh, and uh, other uh, oil products. Selling electric vehicle charger. We have a mission to promote electric mobility and most of the electric uh, vehicle owners, they buy electric chargers at home. So utilities, I would say, take the lead for setting up those electric vehicle chargers. We have worked with forum of regulators to get a separate electricity tariff uh, for uh, electric vehicles in India. Delhi was the first one which in introduced a very concessional tariff for EV charging in 2017. Today, 16 states have promotional or concessional tariff for that. Uh, I, I, we would I, I argue that utilities should give those connections at subsidized uh, the, the special tariff and also uh, the we are working with BIS for the finalizing the specifications of these chargers and we are advocating that we, AC slow charger should come with vehicle to grid functionality and the large number of vehicles connected through the AC charger can be aggregated as virtual power plant which can support the grid uh, and particularly so in uh, renewable integration both the electric vehicles and rooftop PV both are connected to the low voltage grid and rooftop PV uh, as the cloud passes there will be lot changes I mean there, there will be fluctuations that can be smoothened by the batteries of the electric vehicle connected to the same grid and this is again another revenue opportunities selling of batteries so in many parts uh, uh, DG sets are banned we have all large buildings and campuses have standby power arrangement for lift for emergency light for computers etc from DG set or smaller UPS so DG set is banned in, in NCR and in many other cities at least for six months and this will become as the pollution increases this will be permanently banned and we have more than 100 gigawatt of DG sets in large buildings and establishments which need to be replaced with the lithium ion batteries yesterday at this event we re released a white paper which talks about the economics of uh, re replacing DG set with the lithium ion batteries and also for solar and wind applications and EV charging data center, all these uh, lithium ion batteries are going to be cheaper and cheaper. Today it's about uh, 120 to 150 dollar per kilowatt hour the, the battery cost, which we expect to be below 100 dollar by 2025. So utilities can offer lithium ion batteries to customers and lease it back for grid support. A large battery can be leased back for a variety of applications for the discounts for ancillary services, deferral of network up upgrades, smoothening the power from solar PV, as I mentioned already, and other emergency situations. And solar smaller batteries at customer premises, like in the inverter which we have today. So I have seen it in Japan that large number of batteries can be aggregated through battery aggregation software systems and run as virtual power plants. So these are all areas we need to look at it. I mentioned about the latest trend in America and other places is utilities building their own telecommunication network. One major uh, trigger to it is that the electric cable which you lay that comes with inbuilt fiber optic cables at a very marginally higher cost and no additional right of way required for laying the fiber, no laying cost, it's only termination of the fiber is the only additional cost. The uh, actual from your uh, the, the XLPE cable or the uh, the, the, the distribution cables it's only two to three percent extra cost for having a fiber inbuilt in that which gives you 48 to 96 fibers so the last mail connectivity they are using plc or r mesh and the cable the fiber network is completely extending all across the distribution system so own communication network for smart metering and network automation is the way forward which our utilities also should look at it and the spare fiber in fact a utility don't need more than two sets of fiber for their own 
communication the other 40 or 44 or 95 set of fibers can be leased to uh, telecommunication providers in fact with isgf advice bescom is doing some 7000 kilometers of cable and uh, overhead line they are making into underground lines in bangalore in that cabling project they have got for some 196 uh, pair uh, fiber optic cables the total cost has gone in the entire project by seven percentage only and already telecom operators have leased line even before the cables are laid there are agreements to buy uh, bandwidth from them and also in some of the underserved communities this connectivity the bandwidth with the electric uh, city companies it can support internet and cable tv tv services in such places the smart homes and grid interactive buildings this is another uh, emerging trend which we are seeing all the buildings with uh, the building management system can be integrated with uh, uh, the dms of the utility and buildings can interact in real time with uh, the, the distribution grid the battery energy storage systems of such campuses and buildings uh, and they become a complete microgrid, a smart grid connected microgrid, which can island from the main grid during peak hours, buy electricity from the grid when prices are low or when surplus generation is there and sell it back to the grid during peak hours uh, with, from their battery energy storage systems or the large number of EVs connected to those campuses and provide ancillary services. So this smart homes and buildings with smart appliances could provide demand responses. So utilities should evaluate these business models by enabling such uh, communities, uh, maybe industrial park, maybe commercial uh, complexes into smart campuses, which can become uh, microgrids, which, which are connected to the grid, which can island from them. So unlocking the value of the substation land, which I talked about it 30, 40 years ago, when we built large substations, even with the discoms or even this is more applicable to transcos. They were all outside the cities. Over the years, the cities in India has grown so fast that they are all become prime commercial properties. If the regulations and rules can be amended appropriately for commercializing those land, and many of the substations require capacity enhancement, there is no land available there. By, by converting these substations into gas insulator substations, up to 70% of the land can be free made free and it can be commercialized and a small portion of the price from such commercialization is only required for conversion of ais into gis and enhance their capacity balance money can be used for uh, overall uh, utility requirement and system upgrades and the another very important thing is the lamp poles which is a often forgotten asset which they have it's a gold mine actually it can be in installed for uh, leverage for ev charging points it can be leveraged for installing 4G, 5G, and Wi-Fi antennas. And uh, particularly when 5, 5G comes, the number of antennas will go in many times, uh, 10 times or 20 times more antennas required. And these are smaller antennas which can be put on lamp poles. And trons are going to be, passenger trons and delivery trons are going to be very popular very soon. And pollution avoidance systems, navigation systems for that need to be put up everywhere. and the lamp poles are one good places for such things because electricity is already there and with the 4g or 5g or wi-fi antennas coming you have communication bandwidth also on the same pole and those are the going to be the main uh, the, the valuable property where you can have security cameras where you can have a pollution monitoring sensors and all this it can be there this need to be looked at it a lot of innovation happening there many of the lamp poles are good going to be solar powered with batteries and sensors and cameras and all that and la lastly the maintenance services most of the large buildings they outsource their electrical maintenance to third parties utilities have skilled employees many of them are going to be redundant when you have smart meter your all the meter readers are going to be redundant there are so many other people going to be redundant when you have uh, many network automation and all of them can be reskilled retrained and retained for undertaking maintenance services to large commercial complexes, industrial parks, and other buildings. Customers will have more trust with the utilities taking over responsibility to maintain their buildings and rather than in, in, engaging third parties. This is the last item which I mentioned about 
pulling as a service oh. in delhi in last three three and a half decades the temperature summer top uh, the highest temperature gone up by six degrees to last two years we see temperatures above 48 degree at this rate it, by 2030 temperature will be above 50 degrees centigrade it will be impossible for most people to leave work or commute and nationally today i get the best number i get is five percent of the households have air conditioners urban india has 10 percentage and in delhi up, approximately up to 30 percent people have air conditioners and this air conditioners spew out uh, heat creating heat islands and it makes hell for people who do not have access to cooling and incremental improvement today all the energy efficiency program we run including the india cooling action plan it's all talking about improving the efficiency of the room air conditioner which is not going to meet the need we will not be able to even meet our ndc commitment because the number of air conditioners which will be added every year is going to be much more than what is existing today this incremental Im Im improvement of the efficiency is not going to be the way forward so water electricity and gas are provided as a service to buildings the same way cooling can also be provided as a service the statistic cooling systems are very popular these days the only installation which is there in india is in the gift city it's uh, Ahmedabad, uh, between Ahmedabad and uh, Gandhinagar. They are running a uh -huh. system where they are giving the water to all the buildings and they are building on a monthly basis. We are strongly advocate that we should have this in every street, every building, and to provide that services. This uh, uh, requires deep pockets and huge capex to do that. And this, this is the return comes slowly, and for which uh, electric utilities are the appropriate agency to do that and india with the, the, the climate uh, change which is happening we should seriously consider uh, moving forward to uh, district cooling systems so these are some of the the, the very uh, radical uh, ideas which i have muttered and i had shared this presentation with all the panelists in this uh, uh, session and uh, i will now request our chair honorable chairman of uh, cerc for his opening uh, words. Thank you. Over to you, Pujari, sir. Thank you, Mr. Rezi uh, Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, very elaborate and uh, uh, detailed uh, presentation. And uh, I tend to agree with you that in the present circumstances, probably uh, when uh, the other option of uh, the discounts to uh, increase revenue by simply going um, for a raise in a rise in tariff, I think is that option is very limited now. We don't have that option or that don't have the luxury of uh, raising the tariff to an indefinite extent. And reduction of cost itself, uh, I think a lot of uh, issues are being faced. So at least in the short term and also in the long term, they need to look at these alternative sources of revenue. And you have covered all the aspects. Uh, I, I, I tend to agree that both the physical assets uh, of the discounts and also the digital assets both can be monetized and uh, there are certain things that has been done already for example power grid uh, already is uh, 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 doing the telecom uh, in, the, in the field of telecom and they are sharing the revenue with the discounts and they also are using their towers for uh, putting those uh, uh, machinery of the telecom uh, telcos Recently, uh, when the government announced uh, the rolling out of the 5G, uh, in the uh, other, other, in many other countries, uh, there has been experience where they have been basically leveraging on the distribution network of the discoms. So in India also, uh, the TRI, uh, we had a discussion with TRI, uh, Telecom Regulatory Authority, and then there is a joint working group between uh, CRC and, and uh, Telecom Regulatory Authority where the discounts uh, representative also are members and the state regulators are also members and some of the telcos uh, are also members and then uh, where they're working out how exactly the, the assets of the discounts can be used or leverage for rolling out 5G uh, in a very faster way and also it will provide an opportunity for the discounts to get some revenue from utilizing those assets. So it is a win-win situation both for uh, telecoms telecoms and also for the discounts where they can save time, energy and the cost of uh, 
getting into the right away issues, and also there will be review for the discount. So that that's already being done. There is a work, working group which is working uh, jointly to take advantage of that. I, you mentioned uh, in many other countries that, that uh, the discounts or uh, the distribution utilities are basically uh, monetizing the, a lot of digital assets, uh, specifically uh, the the consumer uh, behavior and uh, the consumer data is available. Of course, this is subject to the privacy issues. Or other issues are involved, but subject to the privacy issues, I think a lot of information is available with the discounts. Uh, once you go for the smart meter, once you go for the smart grid, you know precisely what is the consumer behavior and subject to those uh, addressing those privacy issues, many of those uh, information can be monetized. Uh, that, that's already you have covered. So this, I, I also tend to agree saying that these are the options available today. Apart from that, uh, some of the new market uh, opportunities are becoming available to the discount. For example, uh, the CRC at the moment is uh, trying to uh, uh, finalize uh, the ancillary services regulation. Where, as of today, the ancillary services are procured by the system operator through the administered mode. And definitely in the near future, in very shortly, we'll have come up with regulations where these services are, uh, are, are to be procured from the market. Now, once once they get, uh, I mean, here also discounts uh, can play, it's not only the Genco's that they have the option, the discounts also can play a role and, uh, and get into the market. Like today in the RTM also, uh, discounts are playing a role. So uh, RTM and service services market, these are the new opportunity that is being uh, made available to the market operations and where the smart discounts, uh, they, they can look at uh, uh, their the portfolio and see uh, and load management, load load uh, curve, and see where exactly they can uh, play uh, and then make money out of it. So many of the discounts today are already into that game. So these are the few options that is available apart from the traditional uh, 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 traditional method of uh, like you have mentioned about uh, 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 electric stove and other things. I mean that's 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 uh, uh, is an is an opportunity definitely. Uh, but uh, that again, taking up uh, this sort of new uh, business uh, uh, domain, what I, as a regulator, probably will look at it is within the scope of uh, the utilities, the way the traditional scope that uh, uh, within which the discount function, within that, what are the options that are available? Like, for example, electric stove, yes, uh, uh, that, that is already a part of uh, the government. Uh, uh, thinking because uh, when when village electrification took place and then access to all the household uh, did take place that that has been done now so now the emphasis is on the providing quality and reliable power supply once the quality and reliable power supply is done probably it will be much easier to go for electric stove and uh, switch over to the electric stove cooking than uh, supplying gas uh, cylinders to in the rural areas but then we need to we need to do that Go to the electric stop uh, shift. We need to really assure that uh, the power is available uh, reliably. Otherwise, uh, again, we, that, that market is not available. So, a lot of uh, the back end work needs to be done. It's not uh, simple. So, those are the opportunities, but then we need to, uh, the, this company to work on that. So, uh, uh, you rightly said that this is an area which we need to look at, and then discounts you need to look at. It's not simply that you go and uh, 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 go for the uh, 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 rise in the tariff uh, or uh, 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 that, that option, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, maybe limited because of affordability issues. Maybe it has implication on the cross subsidy issues. So uh, maybe that option is not available. But uh, is not the revenue, again, I want to point out that it's not the revenue only, but then look at uh, uh, basically the surplus, you know, generating surplus is an option where the where, where you need to look at the your cost part of it also. But this comes along with the other things that you need to look at their costing. And uh, there, uh, one is, of course, the ATNC losses. We have been talking about it. But uh, then again, it is a purely within the domain of the discounts where a lot of emphasis has been given. But general achievement has not been that satisfactory. And still, we have a long way to go. Uh, power procurement uh, is an issue which uh, there is an element which is within the domain of the discount, for example, the how to manage the portfolio, the uh, efficient power procurement, the cost of power discounts uh, will don't have much of an option in the sense that the cost is given to them. 
but at least they can they can they can bring in the efficiency how to manage that portfolio that's an option that you can look at it so it is it is both on the cost side and revenue side whenever there is a scope they need to look at it and uh, and, and maximize their uh, uh, revenue uh, so these are the new opportunities that i i, I thought uh, i'll mention uh, in in terms of uh, 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 is the revenue look at look at uh, monetizing the physical assets look at monetization of the digital assets look at the new market opportunity that is coming up and then for that uh, the discoms need to be very uh, you know basically they to make themselves smart and then take advantage of uh, uh, the, these opportunities uh, there are so many discoms but if you look at the uh, look at the options there is very few discoms in india who really uh, take advantage of that so there is there is need to uh, i mean i, I can say they need to look at uh, need for hand holding many of the discoms and making them aware and, and basically teaching them how to play this uh, games otherwise again it gets cornered by few of the discoms who are very smart so uh, 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 of course market operators like that only people who are basically uh, uh, more informed and the more smart and think ahead uh, they take advantage of it but uh, as as a, as a society or as a regulator i think we need to uh, bring in that every 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 discount have the opportunity and equal opportunity at least uh, to take advantage of this this level so uh, i think this is an important area and uh, the options that you pointed out i think as uh, are, are are the real options and then you need to explore uh, that and i i understand that uh, discounts will be looking at those options so i think i'll stop here thank you so much for writing and asking me to share my views thank you thank you very much for those encouraging words and the openness from the regulator to look at some of these options if not all so in fact uh, uh, last month in one of the uh, state regulatory advisory committee meeting in which uh, isgv is a member i was there there were uh, heated arguments going on between the consumer section and the utility section and the regulator in between asking for the tariff increase as you rightly said there is very little scope for In, in increasing the tariff particularly in the pandemic situation when people's electricity bill has gone up not because of the tariff but because of their increased the consumption they are sitting at home 24/7 and most of the people their actual consumption has gone up and many of them their income has come down so there was little scope for in, increasing the uh, then the consumer uh, association people were arguing that reduce your expenses and again uh, how much expense reduction can be done by a uh, discom maybe 3% 2% 5% there is not so that's when we i talked about this uh, there are we been working on this uh, 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 additional or alternate revenue opportunities for discom so now we come to uh, uh, hear from uh, justice chauhan sir uh, the delhi uh, the national capitals regulator regulating the most modern uh, electricity distribution companies in delhi over to you uh, justice chauhan sir you can unmute yourself and you can speak sir mr pillai chairman of cias uh, king patilari are you ready sir yeah, we can hear you sir you can you can go ahead so as uh, discussed with you I had already indicated that I would not like to be, but on your insistence, and friends all over the Even world. Even the camera is more to your in this conference. <laughs> all over who are participating in this conference, I am really grateful to Mr. Pillai for allowing me to participate in this conference and to speak to some extent at this juncture. well i'll go by the words of mr pujari mr pujari has pointed out the difficulties of the regulator and the legal implications which are prevailing before the regulator so reducing the cost well i appreciate the study and research which has been done by mr pillai and he has pointed out all the possible methods all the possible junctures all the possible ways and means on on the basis of which the 
income of the discoms can be increased or the customer can also be benefited to certain extent by raising certain infrastructure or by providing certain facilities by the distribution companies by the discoms or by the government the in india the role of the government is also very important and so when we are talking about 24 by 7 supply then the honorable prime minister and the government of india has done a lot of work in this regard and infrastructure has been raised all over the country to reach every household that is the part of the government where the government is supposed to do and where the distribution licenses come into picture and they supply the <laughs> the electricity to the consumers now there are various cost factors when we when the discoms are supplying as you know all over the world that those cost factors are to be included and taken into consideration while fixing the cost of the tariff we have been fixing the tariff of the delhi and for the last so many years though we are giving tariff every year but for the last so many years the tariff has not been increased but there are constraints before us and the constraints can be met out by other means also so what target has been set up by mr pillai the infrastructure in respect of that is not ready at the moment maybe in some countries it may be ready but so far india is concerned it is, we are not ready for the maximum limit which has been indicated by mr pillai so let us wait let the infrastructure come up and then we can derive income benefit the consumers and benefit the discoms thank you very much thank you sir thank you thank you very much uh, again very encouraging words that uh, the regulatory is open to consider uh, if utilities are proposing uh, such a message so with that i will now invite mr pravir sinha who used to be our uh, a member on iscf board and also managing director of delhi uh, data power delhi distribution and now he is the managing director of uh, complete data power uh, over to you sir uh, thank you reggie and uh, thank you isga for the giving me the opportunity uh, first of all i think uh, uh, the introduction and the uh, team presentation that was made by reggie was very interesting Uh, especially uh, considering that uh, there are huge amount of opportunity and this is because there is a transition in the way uh, the utilities have to function today utilities are not only talking of just being suppliers of electricity but the supplier of energy and i think that's the role change that we are seeing uh, that the utilities will go through in the coming years it is very forward looking in terms of what all can be done and especially considering that uh, the utilities role itself will undergo a huge change uh, with the distributed generation large penetration of roof top solar uh, storage there will not be too much of work that the utilities have to do in terms of managing the supply of power uh, there will be scenarios where uh, there will be clusters of homes or clusters in which people will generate themselves and they may be that might take place and in those conditions it is very very necessary that the utilities come up with new solutions value added services which uh, are uh, to the extent of not only providing additional services to the consumers but also creating additional revenue for the utilities uh, mr pujari mentioned that uh, there are the physical assets there are the digital assets and the new market opportunity uh, we also strongly believe 
that uh, there are physical assets today uh, we have large number of distribution uh, assets which are there uh, we have grid stations sub stations now how do we use some of these physical assets uh, there are also large number of electricity poles that we have uh, also we have the cables and conductors which have been put can they be utilized in efficiently whereby we will be able to monetize some of the uh, some of these physical assets uh, in delhi we have tried uh, in a very small way a uh, number of our grid stations we have provided to the telecom companies for putting their uh, telecom towers uh, and there is a fees that is paid by them which are, again goes to the consumer then it uh, there is a uh, regulation on sharing mechanism where uh, any asset of the discom is used then it's a 60 40 that is 60% goes to the consumer and 40% to the discom and if there is no asset of the discom that is used then 60% goes to the discom and 40% to the consumer so i think it's a very fair un understanding and a regulation uh, uh, that has been given by the delhi regulator and the regulations uh, today promotes uh, that anything that can be done to increase the revenue model of the discoms uh, should be tried for and i think uh, uh, delhi we have been fortunate that the regulatory system has supported it in fact uh, uh, as a uh, discom we have uh, gone and done consultancy work in various places including goa and some of the other utilities and the revenue that has come uh, after meeting the expenses has been used to Uh, uh again offset uh, the cost of the discom so i think uh, uh, some of these aspects are very very important uh, going forward uh the other aspect was digital assets and information uh while one has to take care of the privacy if mass data is provided again we have seen that uh, we can uh, provide very useful inputs uh, to other service providers Uh, in fact, uh, many a times the municipal corporations they connect with us and ask if uh, uh, whether as per their assessment how many houses are there and as per our assessment how many houses and connections are there and that information is useful for them for collecting the property tax. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, we uh, find that uh, while uh, the number of uh, electricity consumers are, are very high in Delhi, the number of water consumers are very less and uh, an exchange of information and also a common service that can be provided will be again very useful uh, not only to the con from the consumer perspective but also from uh, the uh, additional revenue that the utilities can get uh, tata power has also in delhi uh, started a new initiative on the gas whereby common billing can be done or or even if not common separate billing because the regulations do not allow a common billing but can we use our own existing system to connect to these consumers and help them in getting new connection from a consumer perspective it makes lot of sense the consumer uh, has to go to a separate office for gas or separate uh, uh, authorities they need to connect for gas separate for water separate for power separate for internet so if we can have a bundled service and a combined service not only it is beneficial to the consumer but it is also a revenue source for the utilities because uh, as we are seeing that year after year the uh, tariff increases are not taking place there is huge uh, demand from the uh, from the consumers that tariff hikes should not take place but uh, notwithstanding that the increase in prices of power continues the coal prices goes up the gas prices goes up and the generating cost is going up so for uh, utilities it needs to do a very good balancing act to ensure that their tariff does not go up and for that some of the additional revenue models are very very important uh, uh, mr pujari also mentioned about the new uh, market opportunities the ancillary market is something that again is a great opportunity Uh, as a utility, uh, you are at the end of the uh, tunnel in terms of managing the uh, load, uh, managing the frequency, managing the harmonics, and the ancillary market, 
will help you to uh, provide that sort of support and service, especially now that uh, some of the utilities are also putting storage batteries and they will be in a much better condition to provide some of these ancillary services on real-time basis. So uh, many of these solutions which are coming up, uh, the, uh, the RTM market, the uh, ancillary services, I think all of them are very, very useful uh, for uh, utilities for uh, increasing their revenue model. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, something which is now going to become a reality. And uh, as and when uh, this becomes a reality, whether it is rooftop solar, induction heater, uh, in, uh, uh, home automation services, demand response. Now, all these are services which uh, is going to come as we see more and more automation happening in the distribution system. And in each of these services where uh, the utilities are providing, uh, many of them are now providing these services gratis, free of cost to their consumer. At some stage, there has to be a subscription model whereby the consumers have to pay if they have to uh, avail these additional services, like in banks. Eh? If you have to use certain additional services for every additional service, there is a fee attached to it, and only the base service is something which is guaranteed by the bank. So similarly, in the utility space, this will have to happen. The regulatory change uh, we have seen uh, uh, keeps pace with the changes which are happening in the market. I remember a few years back when we did the demand response project, uh, we uh, did that for the consumers, and consumers were not given any benefit. They were, it was gratis. But uh, subsequently, uh, we went to the regulator and the regulator appreciated the, the uh, support that is being provided and especially in managing the peaking power uh, and how the deferment of that can be done. And accordingly, they gave a, a fee that can be given to the, uh, to the participants of the uh, demand response. So I think uh, in an evolving market, in a futuristic market, uh, there is a lot of learning that is happening by the discounts. And similarly, the uh, regulatory system also is rising to the occasion and is supporting. Uh, six years back, uh, none of us knew about net metering. And again, Delhi was the first discount which talked about net metering and allowed net metering to happen in Delhi. And, uh, and today, uh, all the states have followed since then. Similarly, on EV charging, again, Delhi... Uh, uh, regulatory system was the first regulatory system which uh, accepted that uh, to uh, induce uh, uh, and promote EV charging, uh, there has to be a lower tariff. So, and uh, they gave that and which of course was subsequently followed by all other regulators. So I think in the uh, evolving market, uh, both uh, the discounts and the regulatory system have to evolve. And uh, going forward, this will happen. So I'll rest over here and once again, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sinha. Thank you very much. And uh, you mentioned about this bundling of services, which we have been advocating for long. Uh, <coughs> uh, the villages and grassroots levels, uh, so that the volume of business is big enough where efficiency too can be deployed. Uh, uh, that, that's something which we should uh, look at it. But then different domains are there, different regulators are there, different uh, ministries are there. That is a challenge which we need to look at it. Last year, uh, for the distribution utility meet, which we conducted physically in Delhi, on Thursday evening, we conducted a plenary session. We brought uh, uh, some 15 uh, city gas distribution operators, and we had about 38 uh, dis discounts, electricity discounts. We had a plenary session, made a meet them each other or a matchmaking we have done. Tell them that please at least share the, uh, the, the customer data. If a new licensee go to a new uh, city, they don't even know who are the customers there, who are the residents there, whereas Discoms already knows it. So this kind of matchmaking, we've been trying to do that. And uh, Praveer, what you have done in Delhi is the first step towards that with the IGL and TPDDL. And we look forward to showcasing that as a success story in the coming uh, editions. With that, I will request uh, Isit Susan to make a presentation uh, on the microgrid from Nissan Electric. Uh, over to you, sir. Isit Susan? Yes. 
I, I, can I start my presentation? Yes, please. Can you hear me? Yes, we can okay. hear you. You can share your screen. You can turn on your camera. Okay. Just a moment. I'm sorry. Sorry, just a moment. If you have difficulty sharing the screen, we can do it from here. Okay, okay, okay. I can. Yeah. Wow. Very good. Thank you. Oh. Can you see this? Oh, sorry. Sorry, oh, my, my PowerPoint is stopped. So once again. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I, I start my presentation now. Thank you for giving this opportunity today. My, uh, the purpose of my presentation is to explain our new concept substation, micro substation with PVT, power voltage transformer. Micro substation can realize high efficiency and environmentally friendly power supply in the areas with undeveloped distribution network. Nissan Electric and uh, NEDO is conducting pre-demonstration uh, pre survey about uh, micro substation in India. And we are conducting feasibility study for two years now. And this activity is supported by NEDO and uh, uh, oh, advised by from Tata Power DDL. We really appreciate their support. Next slide, please. First, I will show you about the concept of micro substation. Please image, please image the situation. Uh, in the rural area, uh, there is transmission line above us but no electric power in the village. In this case, how do we get power, uh, electric power? First approach is will be drone distribution from remote existing substation in the city area. But in this case, there is no need to construct new of new substation, but in this case, due to the long, long distribution, power quality is unstable. Next, next slide, please. Ne second approach is construction of a new conventional substation, a new substation. In this case, we can get stable power from new substation, but we need huge money and large space. Then next slide, please. Third approach is distributed power system using diesel generator. In this case, we can also get stable power from fossil fuel, but we need uh, frequently refueling and also not environmentally friendly. That's problem. So next slide, please. 
missing electric proposal is micro substation with power voltage transformer. In this case, we can get stable ele electric power from micro substation with low cost and small place and environmentally friendly. From the next page, I will explain the uh, outline of micro substation. Next slide, please. In this page, uh, I will explain the advantages of micro substation. First is direct power supply from transmission line, extra high voltage or high voltage to low voltage, direct conversion with single step down. So simple and reliable system. And the second is we don't need refueling and also frequent maintenance is not required. So running cost is low. And micro substation can reduce CO2 by 40% than diesel generator. So as you can see the table in the slide, uh, micro substation is superior in terms of cost and occupancy space and environmental impact. Next slide, please. This, this page is about PVT, power voltage transformer. PVT is based on the technology of GVT, gas insulated voltage transformer. As you know, instru instrument voltage transformer is capacity is uh, less than one kVA or something. So we cannot use for village electrification. But we, Nissan Electric has developed uh, 100 kVA GVT. So we can use for village electrification. And the technology to combat from extra high voltage to low voltage is based on the gas boat GVT technology. And Nissan Electric is very exper ex experienced for more than 50 years. So we have high level of techniques and we deliver GVT, gas VT all over the world. Delivery record is uh, about 60,000 sets in the world, and also in India, more than 1,500 sets. And already we have developed some kinds of PVT. Primary voltage range is from 66 kilo voltage to 245 kilo voltage. Next slide, please. This page is about system outline. Left side is single line diagram. You can see uh, micro substation has only single step down with PVT. And right side is equipment layout, five meter and eight meter. So occupancy space is only 40 square meters, much less than conventional substation. Next slide, please. In conclusion, I would like to say that micro substation can contribute to stable power supply in the rural area. But there are no examples in India yet. So Nissin Electric in collaboration with NEDO is conducting pre-demonstration survey now for the demonstration in project in India until the end of February next year. And after that, Nissin Electric would like to conduct demonstration project in India to verify both technical issues and business issues. Technical issues is system construction based on the conditions of Indian power system and regulations and also evaluation power quality, normal condition, and both uh, unexpected failure conditions. 
and finally prove the total effectiveness of micro substation in India. And also business issues is market potential, potential in India and also profitability evaluation as a power supply business. Uh, micro substation of our uh, proposal is not newest technology, but unique technology. If you would like to know more about micro substation, please contact us at email or website. Thank you for your attention and thank you for give, uh, giving this opportunity today. And I'm sorry, my PC is uh, not uh, goes well. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much for that presentation, uh, Dr. Uh, in fact, uh, during India's Smart Utility Week in March 2020, uh, Nissan Electric had a booth and the, the, the same solution which you have demonstrated there attracted the attention of a lot of people uh, who visited from utilities as well as our secretary power, our joint secretary distribution. They all personally told me that uh, this is something we should demonstrate. Uh, we should do a pilot in India. Unfortunately, after that, from the very next week, after the India Smart Utility mm -hmm. Week, there was uh, lockdown and uh, everything went heavier. So we... I'm glad that you are already doing a pilot uh, in TPDD uh, for the micro uh, substation. And uh, let the situation clear up. Next year, we'll ensure that a large uh, uh, pilot project is undertaken. Uh, mm -hmm. From NEDO, we have um, Mr. Kakusan as the new uh, uh, in India chief representative in India. We'll be very happy to uh, handhold you. Uh, and with uh, in Delhi or in other cities to do uh, some of these new technologies. We have done many such uh, uh, new innovations from different countries. We have actually done in TPDDL and in other uh, utility grids. Before in their own countries, the grid operators allow them to try out on the real grid. We have given them opportunities here. We will continue mm -hmm. to do that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. But, uh, and now I'll invite Mr. Pa uh, Mahesh Padankar, who is the interim project uh, head of the regulatory assistance project. Uh, I, 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 I must admit that I don't know much about this uh, RIT uh, or the regulatory assistance project. We would uh, be keen to hear from you. Over to you, uh, Mahesh Ji. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, uh, 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 Reishi. Uh, and uh, I'm really glad to be here with the eminent panel that we have. Uh, you said this. Uh, for the right things related to the revenue opportunities. Uh, and uh, the comments made by Mr. Pujari, Mr. Sean, Mr. Sinha, and uh, Tasya Pijutsu-san are uh, absolutely pertinent to uh, what I'm going to speak as well. So just a couple of sentences on the regulatory assistance project. Uh, this is a not-for-profit working from uh, US. Uh, RAP works in... Um, US, uh, EU, India, and China. In India, we have been uh, uh, assisting several regulators uh, uh, past decade and working very closely with some of the foundations such as uh, Shakti Sustainable Energy Foundation. Uh, this was set up by ex-regulators in the US. So uh, RAP brings in substantive um, expertise in um, uh, looking at regulatory frameworks uh, in a little bit different manner and bringing in innovations. Now coming to the topic of the day, uh, um, uh, it's very clear that uh, we have a severe challenge uh, before us uh, when we have uh, CNI consumers uh, uh, reducing their uh, own consumption and because of any uh, impact uh, scenes such as that of uh, COVID-19, uh, 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 we, we do see sort of substantial revenue uh, that the discoms um, uh, get uh, and Reggie, I must congratulate you. You have really, really sort of talked about innovative uh, opportunities to improve the revenue base uh, of the discounts. And uh, we also have been thinking on similar lines. And the way I try to articulate that is we have an opportunity before us to implement everything that the discount can do behind the meter. So far, the conventional wisdom has been 
uh, to supply and then capture revenue. But what's important uh, is if you were to really uh, look at alternative business structures for the discounts to start investing in energy efficiency, demand response, uh, behind the meter renewable energy, front of the meter renewable energy, uh, storage solutions, uh, thermal energy storage, battery energy storage. These are all the value added services that uh, the discounts can provide to a multitude of uh, consumers. Starting with CNI consumers, one could look at public utilities, domestic consumers, as well as the agriculture consumers. So I think uh, the time is right for us to think about uh, different opportunities uh, for the discounts to leverage uh, the changes that are happening. And the changes sometimes offer opportunities. And in this case, I also would like to uh, emphasize a little bit more on electrification of transportation, which is actually posing substantive opportunities in the city um, based uh, public transportation, passenger transport. And on a lighter note, Reji, uh, in the backdrop, you have a handcart uh, and a truck, which is transporting goods uh, uh, in your office. Probably I see that frame. So looking at freight transportation and last mile transportation uh, and electrification opportunities thereof are substantial uh, options available to the uh, discounts. Uh, there are other um, regulatory uh, improvements that one can think of. And uh, I'm not an expert uh, from the legal perspective of what the law is telling us in India, but I would like to just sort of uh, open the uh, options before us, uh, for us to imagine all the fixed cost exposure with the discounts have with conventional uh, PPAs, which um, are sort of borne uh, by the discounts on an annual basis. How about we thinking about uh, uh, the fixed costs uh, 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 paid to the PPAs and the thermal uh, assets that we currently do uh, uh, to be replaced and substituted by the fixed cost paid towards investments made on the customer side of the meter. So uh, in your articulation, uh, Reggie, you talked a lot about uh, different options that we have with grid interactive buildings, grid interactive uh, cooling services, green interactive agriculture services, transportation services. So how about we uh, thinking uh, a little bit out of the box and if there is any kind of option available in the current construct of the act or whenever we have any kind of subsequent revisions being made, can we think of replacing the fixed cost burden of the discounts uh, and move it away from the uh, thermal assets, the supply side and the generation assets uh, towards the demand side part of it. So I would sort of encourage uh, we thinking about that in that manner. And that leads me to uh, think about some kind of a regulatory sandbox. So one of the uh, exploration that we are currently doing is to look at some level of feeder based uh, interventions. So um, uh, in the past at uh, in Maharashtra, uh, MERC, Honorable uh, Regulatory Commission in Maharashtra had uh, talked about a uh, feeder-based demand side management. So imagine one uh, substation on which we have uh, different uh, consumers and then uh, uh, looking at KW and the K KVA and the KWH part of that particular feeder and giving some kind of energy service uh, uh, opportunities to the discoms uh, directly or through uh, their vendors and uh, supply chain partners uh, to uh, provide the right kind of service that is required. And uh, if we really imagine that kind of a regulatory sandbox, in the US and EU, they use a term called as performance-based regulation. And I find that quite interesting, wherein if we encourage the discounts to move away from the conventional wisdom of supplying and then uh, uh, really sort of struggling, whether we have high level of renewable energy coming in, we have seen instances where there have been some kind of a uh, uh, curtailment of the renewable energy sources that are available as well in certain states. So can we think of uh, some kind of a package wherein we would look at energy efficiency, demand response, storage solutions, build uh, grid interactive buildings, including thermal storage, et cetera, even including the affordable housing that can use the grid interactive services, all as a package for a feeder-based mechanism to be created for um, a specific service that would be delivered to the consumers who are on that feeder. 
and in the current construct uh, we do have some kind of a leeway in the form of demand side management regulations which have been notified by more than 90% of the reg uh, state regulators in the country and we have examples uh, from delhi mumbai uh, bangalore several places where uh, the demand side management regulations do allow for certain level of investments that can be made into the customer side of the meter and i clearly remember in the maharashtra's uh, mrc's regulation for the demand side management there is a specific clause which says that return on investment uh, would be allowed on case to case basis based on the evaluation uh, and the uh, imp uh, and the assessment of the uh, tariff impact uh, if the discom chooses to invest on customer side of the meter so we do have certain provisions in the law which uh, uh, in the regulations that are available and if we sort of uh, work together and take that forward i would like to propose creating some kind of regulatory sandbox and creating certain pilots that one can leverage um, entirely and i would like to just make last point uh, which is about uh, renewable portfolio obligations uh, which uh, would get hampered uh, uh, because of the additional renewable energy that would get generated if we really do not see the sink of that uh, uh, additional electrons that would get generated uh, in the demand side part of it so uh, uh, there have been some sort of uh, talk about also thinking about energy efficiency portfolio obligations so would the, and this goes beyond pad scheme where the entire uh, structure of pad scheme is about a generation part of it and the tnd structure of the distribution companies but i'm talking about energy efficiency portfolio obligation uh, from the demand side perspective wherein we would bring in the consumers or as a part of the utility targets so i was actually wondering is it possible for us to think about some kind of a clean energy portfolio obligation which would again i do not suggest doing any kind of over regulation i am just trying to sort of understand if there are any opportunities to bring in the renewable portfolio obligation energy efficiency portfolio obligations in the past there has been some talk even on the storage obligation so can we bring all of that together and look at it as a portfolio of different interventions that would help the discoms bring up their bring up their uh, revenues uh, and make sure that the cni consumers and all other consumers were subsidizing and also the subsidized consumers always stay with them because uh, irrespective of what we think um, i think the reliability that can be provided through an established grid is something which 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 we should sort of leverage uh, uh, um, as much as possible. So uh, that's what I would like to I had to share. Uh, back to you, Rajiv. Thank thanks a lot for this opportunity. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mahesh. Uh, I, I must say that uh, we are blessed to have very forward-looking regulators uh, in CRC and most of the states I've been dealing with. Or it, it, not only currently, I must say that's 10 years. From 2013 to 2016, all the states and union territories in India issued net metering policies. No other country it happened in less than three years, 2013 to 2016. I had an opportunity to go to most of the states and make presentation. Some places, they, they, they didn't even want a presentation. <laughs> we, we, we are doing it or we have done it. So it will, same is the case with the uh, electric vehicle tariff. Uh, in 2016, in December, in the IFR meeting, we presented. Immediately after that, CRC appointed, uh, incidentally, that consultancy came to you along with IIT Bombay, with Mahesh. You did the study of the electric vehicle impact. Uh, CRC appointed the consultant to do that study. And uh, thereafter, immediately, uh, uh, DRC in the 2017 regulations issued a separate tariff category for electric vehicles. So many other things. Uh, and today, also in the discussion, both uh, Pujari sir and Chauhan sir have said these are all in, uh, interesting uh, ideas and we are open to examine that. So if I, I, it again takes me back to 2005-2006 when I first talked about smart grid, uh, different conferences and different utilities. Everybody asked, no, we have bigger problems. We don't need, need smart grid now. We need uh, to give connectivity to everybody. Access availability is the biggest problem. So uh, we, we used to say that the same with smart metering. And all of them said that no, no, smart metering is too expensive and we, we can't afford it. So that time a smart meter used to cost $500. Those are the initial uh, deployments in 2002 to 2005 in Europe and North America. But today, uh, 
and in 2016 paper we told that uh, the right price for a smart meter if we make the rollout in millions it is going to be somewhere between 2200 to 2500 rupees for a, 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 a single phase meter today the market has come out uh, settled that somewhere in that range between 2200 to 2500 rupees the esl is by procuring at that number so uh, it takes time many of the ideas in the opening presentation i made uh, may look very far reaching but uh, it, it can happen uh, most of them being done in most part of the country before end of this decade and some of them we, we should start with right away and this is the right time to do many of the things uh, when there is a pressure on revenue as well as on the uh, tariff uh, so uh, to the last speaker but not the least uh, Mr. Gaurav Patiani from RTI. So over to you to hear your uh, views. Your colleague uh, Shalap Srivastava yesterday in the session on discount privatization uh, talked about some of the very uh, important uh, uh, points. So over to you, um, Gaurav. Thank you, Viji. Uh, at the outset, let me thank uh, ISGF for giving this opportunity to you uh, and convey my greetings to all the esteemed co-panelists. Uh, being the last speaker today means that several of the points uh, have already been covered. And therefore, what I will like to do is to uh, be very brief and focus my comments on issues which have either not been uh, touched upon or where you know I, have, uh, I strongly support uh, some of the ideas or I disagree with some of the ideas. So, so that's what I will do. Uh, let me start by saying that you know all of us are now getting used to uh, living in a in a world which is post covid and in fact i remember ag uh, the last event i attended was the the isgf event in march uh, but what uh, it has demonstrated uh, is that you know uh, we are living in a very very uncertain world and this has been particularly challenging you know for the distribution utilities because at one end, they found that the demand went down sharply from the customers, uh, commercial, industrial, who were their paying customers. And on the other hand, they had difficulty collecting revenues and households had limited ability to pay. So therefore tariff increases or even collections of the existing bills had to be deferred and so on. So, so, so what we are getting around to is the fact that the future looks uh, very different. In fact, uh, the, the, the fact that you know, uh, Amazon is the leading uh, you know, sponsor of this event uh, tells me a thing or two about the future. Uh, and and uh, what we have to grapple with are known unknowns as well as unknown unknowns. And thus it is very clear that the discounts uh, need to move on, uh, look at a very different future you know, than the traditional commodity supplier model um, and a cost plus kind of a regulation, you know, which is a comfortable model. Of course, the, the discounts in India have additional or you know, ongoing challenges of low efficiency, poor quality and so on. Uh, but again, you know, the future therefore can present uh, opportunities by converting these challenges you know, using the new technologies. Uh, so in the future, I think the key thing is uh, for utilities uh, to move on is to look at how they can add value uh, to the customers. And I think customer centricity uh, is a key theme. Uh, you know, while Reggie, we have outlined various uh, opportunities in terms of different revenue models, uh, converting these opportunities into real businesses uh, will mean you know, discoms get to understand their customers. And I think that's one thing which has not, you know, adequately been discussed today, uh, you know, as to how discoms, particularly the state-owned companies uh, need to integrate uh, and understand their customer far better than they have traditionally done. And therefore, if they are able to do that, uh, these business opportunities uh, can be converted into real businesses. We have seen that happen, you know, in the in, in other sectors of the economy. 
and uh, telecom, which is a very, very similar, uh, you know, conceptual business uh, that, you know, uh, migration has happened. So the fixed line uh, telecom providers uh, moved on to mobile services, uh, then moved to internet, uh, then moved to entertainment, uh, then moved to mobile payment. And now I see they're even moving to uh, e-commerce. And therefore, uh, you know, uh, uh, I also see a very strong potential and I support what Reggie said that, you know, telecom and electric utilities, uh, there is a natural synergy and there are opportunities to leverage those synergies and discounts, you know, with such a vast uh, consumer base uh, being, you know, also a natural monopolies in their geographies are well placed to uh, leverage those. Uh, the key thing, you know, I think, which I will want to again emphasize is the customer simplicity. And that means that, you know, they not only need to understand their customers, but also realign their processes, policies, uh, and, and, and business practices uh, to leverage, uh, you know, those uh, opportunities. And that will lead to two things. One, you know, customer uh, uh, loyalty, uh, and second, you know, innovation, because uh, innovation or creativity will come from understanding at the local level uh, what a customer wants. And customer in Delhi versus customer in Gurgaon uh, is also very different. I can share my example, you know, I have a small home in Delhi uh, uh, where I don't, uh, thanks to, you know, uh, the, the, the private companies now, we don't need uh, inverters. Uh, but in Gurgaon, uh, we need generators as a backup, uh, you know, in a society. But now with COVID, I had to even invest uh, in a UPS uh, because, you know, we wanted uninterrupted uh, internet connectivity to be able to participate in events like this or meetings, which happen all the time now, only on the platforms. So some of the business models, which I think have immediate relevance, uh, electric uh, mobility, yes. Uh, for two reasons. A, you know, the urban air pollution uh, is a big challenge for most of our cities and electric mobility can help in solving that. Uh, on the other end, I find that, you know, distribution companies are grappling with uh, surplus, uh, you know, electricity, which they have contracted. Most of the times uh, this is around the clock electricity and uh, charging electric vehicles in the night is very feasible. So if there is a natural synergy between these two. And I, therefore, I think this is something which can take off relatively quickly. Uh, second thing, uh, you know, which is, uh, I see it is already happening. And uh, at one end, you know, utilities can say that we are struggling with it, which is, uh, you know, the uh, decentralized energy options like solar rooftop, uh, energy efficiency, and so on. But I see it and I view it as an opportunity where they can actually step in because this is something which is going to happen. Um, so then why not actually make it happen in a way uh, that helps discounts? So that's the second thing. And the third uh, opportunity, which uh, Reggie, you mentioned about, but I think it's perhaps bigger than uh, 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 the extent to which you emphasize are the employees. Uh, I think uh, employees of discounts are assets. Of course, you know, we need to do a lot of capacity development uh, to, to, to transform that potential, which is there. But, uh, you know, given that we are a services based economy, given that unemployment is a strong issue, um, I think uh, that is something which I will strongly recommend should be prioritized. Um, so as to ensure that, you know, uh, the current employees are retained, but actually, you know, it is something which will create additional employment and additional livelihood, uh, you know, for, for our economy and for our states. Uh, um, I wanted to quickly mention about regulatory approaches. So Mahesh has already talked about the sandboxes, so I will not go into that. But to say that, you know, in, in, in some of the advanced economies such as US, you know, we're already seeing that the regulators are moving away from traditional cost plus regulation uh, to a new regulation, which is market-based. And, you know, it incorporates uh, market-based earnings and outcome-based earnings into the, uh, you know, utility uh, revenue realization frameworks. So the ARRs 
for example, uh, are factored based on all these opportunities. And it is done in a way that incentivizes utilities to go out and explore uh, these, these options. Uh, the last point I, I, I would like to make is, you know, if we have to make these innovations uh, and unleash uh, this creativity, and Veji, you mentioned about the, the session yesterday on privatization, and I think Shala briefly touched upon this fact. Uh, you know, we have to create uh, these opportunities at much more local level, uh, which would mean that, you know, the distribution businesses uh, need to be realigned, uh, need to be redesigned to much, much smaller, disaggregated, uh, autonomous decision-making units at a smaller level. You know, 100 org distribution companies for the size of India is too few, too far. I think we need maybe 1,000 distribution companies. I said the same thing uh, in, in, in March, uh, you know, when I spoke uh, at your platform. And I would repeat that, you know, because the current way in which, you know, you have top-down bureaucratic decision-making is not conducive to allowing this innovation and realization of all the revenue opportunities, which you outlined very succinctly. So in order to enable uh, these opportunities to become real businesses, we have to create, uh, we have to create uh, an ecosystem which unleashes the creative creativity. And you know, in India, we have seen most of our economy is dominated by MSMEs. And, and I would say, even though distribution is a, is a scales business, uh, there are diseconomies of scale after a particular point. So a correct balance, you know, based on my uh, research is that, you know, about two to three million customers uh, gives you the optimal uh, economic scale and size of a distribution company. So that's what I would suggest uh, we need to do, you know, focus on customers, go close to the customers. Thank you. Thank, 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 thank you, Gaurav. Thank you very much for all those uh, the supporting comments. So uh, we started half an hour late. We are almost uh, 90 minutes are scheduled. Uh, before closing, I would like to uh, give one minute uh, final remarks to all the panelists before handing over to our honorable chair. So starting with uh, uh, Justice Chauhan, sir. Final comments, if any. Uh, well, what final comments can be given after such elaborate discussion and after such elaborate research by the fellow panelists speaking on the occasion? But what I think that all night we should work together and find out a proper solution to enhance the income of the discounts so that the cost of energy may be decreased. Once we, once we have hold over the energy cost, then people will not mind that in whatever manner the income of the discount is increased. But there will be a legal problem that there that in the discount in the regulatory system there are non tariff income and other income. So if we generate tariff non tariff income from other sources, that will be also issue to be addressed. All these things are required to be taken into consideration when we chalk out a common policy for the parameters which have been proposed by Mr. Pillai. So in the end, so I would say that let us work together to find out a proper solution considering the legal implications. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Mr. Sankar. Uh, thank you uh, once again, Reggie, for... Uh, uh, such an interesting uh, presentation and the discussions that we had for last one and a half hours. Uh, I absolutely concur with the views of uh, Justice Chauhan. 
that uh, uh, there are a lot of innovative solutions which are there and the opportunities are phenomenal uh, for the utilities uh, in uh, coming up with new uh, products and services uh, where physical digital uh, assets can be utilized and uh, one will have to work very closely with the regulatory system to ensure that uh, this meets the requirement of the regulatory system and uh, is legally uh, within the electricity act uh, and all these services can be uh, outside the uh, regulated business and uh, I, I think uh, as we have seen the regulatory system evolve over the last uh, 15 17 years uh, many of the changes that are going to happen because of these new services will also be allowed by the regulatory system as non tariffing and uh, uh, i feel that uh, uh, this is a great opportunity a great learning for all of us and uh, the type of innovation that can will come will be phenomenal uh, both from the technology front and on the business front so very excited about this opportunity and uh, i'm sure uh, i'll work very closely with the isgf and the regulatory system to ensure that some of these become a reality so from my side and tata power side we are fully committed to many of these solutions and uh, we will work very closely with the regulators so thank you Reggie. and thank you very much hope some of the ideas can we can do pilot before the next distribution utility meet in November, the dates we will announce the pilot ceremony after this. Over to you, Isu Susan, for your uh, final comments. And... Thank you for, uh, for this opportunity. I think uh, we have some business chances in Indian Discom. Uh, we would like to contribute Indian power sector. So uh, from now, uh, we continue to uh, make effort to present a new technology to India. Thank you very much. Thank you. Look forward to look forward to the same. Uh, over to you, Mahesh, uh, for your panel comments. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So I just uh, would like to add one thing. Uh, taking what you uh, alluded just now, uh, Reji, uh, which is before the next uh, distribution utilities meet, uh, we could sort of think about certain pilots. So I just sort of. Uh, offer uh, my personal sort of uh, interventions and time uh, to even create these kinds of pilots um, in uh, maybe perhaps uh, some private sector uh, utilities uh, as well as some public sector utilities. So certainly uh, would like to support and assist in whatever way uh, I can to create these kinds of pilots. Um, thanks a lot, Reggie. Back to you. Thank you. I look forward to and uh, go to uh, thank you, Veji. Uh, just last quick point is, is, you know, on the market operations, I think that's uh, another opportunity, you know, uh, which distribution companies can look at as offering a service. Um, and, and, you know, part of this is already happening through the trading companies, uh, but, you know, distribution companies uh, can also potentially uh, look at that. Um, and I, I second, uh, you know, the, the, idea of you know taking up pilots and I think um, what I would request uh, is that maybe uh, you know the honorable uh, chairman of CERC can initiate this to the forum of regulators uh, because that will ensure that the regulators uh, are also part of such an initiative. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. So IHF will continue to uh, determine new ideas uh, work with technology partners from around the world to experiment, pilot new technologies in India. And also at the same time, we advocate what we have done in India in the last 15, 20 years. Uh, there is a lot to learn for countries in South Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, in the Middle East and uh, in their African continent. So uh, from my other role as chairman of the Global Smart Energy Federation, we work closely with many of those uh, utilities from those areas and we tell them what we have done in the most challenging uh, area uh, particularly in a multi-party democracy system where our uh, electricity is in the concurrent list of the constitution where state government and central government each one of them are empowered to make policy decisions we still been able to bring 
most stakeholders on one platform and carry forward with the, uh, what uh, our main agenda what we have done added about 80 gigawatt of renewable energy in last 10 years is something which is uh, uh, unparalleled we about 27 million household we electrified in last two years is something again <laughs> political differences, economic difficulties, uh, difficulties caused by geography and uh, other problems. We, if there is a will, there is a way we have shown to the world, we will continue to do that. So uh, with that, I will hand over, uh, uh, no, I will request uh, Pujari sir for the final closing remarks. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Reji, and uh, I think extremely interesting uh, uh, session and a lot of new ideas have been uh, uh, has come up and uh, I think since uh, the time is short, what I'll do is that just uh, summarize in my own way what uh, is the outcome. So there are several opportunities and uh, innovative solutions are there in the, on the plate. And uh, the point is to examine whether the present organization structure of the DISCOMs and the regulatory frameworks are really conducive to enable these discoms to take advantage of these potential opportunities and innovative solutions. So the point came that we need to work together, both uh, the discoms, uh, outside experts, organizations, various organizations and the regulatory bodies to look at uh, how we can create uh, uh, the changes, the required changes in the organization structure and the regulatory framework so that the, you enable the discoms to take advantage of these potential solutions and the opportunities. And for that, I think the good suggestion was made that um, we can look at uh, the regulatory sandbox and then take up some pilot projects and examine. Few few things have been already uh, been done and it is getting implemented, but I think there is a need to enhance or enlarge the scope. So I do look forward to uh, the, the various suggestions that has come from this uh, platform and see whether to what extent uh, as a central regulator, uh, we can intervene and uh, the suggestion that was made saying that yes, the forum of regulator can be used to really uh, uh, sensitize everybody and then take uh, the regulatory um, uh, fraternity to facilitate uh, in exploring this possibility. So I think that's a, that's a suggestion that we note and uh, we do, uh, I, I personally do take note of that and then maybe we work with uh, the, we, we, we bring this uh, agenda in the FOR to see how we can uh, take uh, this whole uh, ideas that has been thrown here forward. So thank you so much for a very, very interesting uh, 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 session and a lot of new ideas and suggestions. And I think uh, uh, we will we'll, we'll censorize uh, all the uh, regulators, state regulators in the FOR also about these ideas. Thank you so much. And thank you very much for those encouraging words, Pajari, uh, sir. And I request everybody to stay back and I will hand over to our host, uh, Aisharia. Over to you, Aisharia. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, with that, uh, I think we've had such an engaging plenary session. I would request all our chair and our esteemed speakers to please give us a photo opportunity. I would request you to please smile where you are, make sure your cameras are on so that we can take a virtual uh, group photograph. Please smile. And we've got it. Thank you very much. A big round of applause, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Our very eminent panel there. Thank you to our chair, Shri Pujari.